Hi, James. Hi. Sarah from the upcoming. Real pleasure to oh, meet hi, you. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. So hi. for people who haven't seen The Aftermath, can you summarise briefly what this film is about? The Aftermath is the story of a British officer stationed to Hamburg at the end of the Second World War. He invites his British wife over. She comes across to Hamburg super hating Germans. She lost her child and, and she can't bear them. And unbeknownst to her, her British husband has allowed a German family to stay in the house that they're moving into and allows them to move up into the attic. And you can imagine her negativity about that. And it's really the story of how she goes from that to a, to, to a, to a story of great understanding and empathy. An absolutely stellar cast, not least Kira Knightley, Alexander Skarsgård and Jason Clark. So how did you cast these people and how is it working with these incredible actors? Well, um, you just hope they love the script. Kira Knightley was the first one to commit to the film. She was uh, amazing. She loved it. She thought the script was sensational. And then Alexander Skarsgård, I think knowing Kira was doing it, was like, okay, yeah, yeah. And then Jason Clark came a bit later. We wanted to get, funny enough, it was like we wanted to get the British wife and the German first. Sort of somehow felt once we had that dynamic, then, then the British officer would fit in. Did you have a particular highlight or a really challenging moment on set? A really, we had lots of really challenging moments. I suppose one of the moments was shooting the scene where there's an attack on the car that they're in. And it was shot very late at night. It was minus 15. And um, I had to ask Kira Knightley to run down a slope that steep in a ball gown and stilettos. <laughs> and I had no idea that there was the biggest insurance risk a director could ever take. And afterwards she said, because I really like you, James, I did that. It was like, I must have been crazy to ask her to do that. 1946 Hamburg, not an era of history or an location that we're much covered on the screen. So why do you think it's important to tell this story and what do you think people might take away? This story is, is very important because it's about reconciliation and understanding both for other human beings and for nations. I mean, we're at a time when we're sort of drifting away from that, if I can put it that way. And we need to remember just how the British were in 1946 when we could have been so cruel. We were kind and generous. Can you quickly tell us what you're gonna work on next? Uh, well, I've just finished a Richard Gere television drama, Mother, Father, Son, that starts very soon on BBC. And I have a couple of film projects that are warming up nicely. I can't really say what they are. Uh, Mother, Father, Son's an amazing psycho thriller about a family and about corruption in politics and the media and Richard Gere's phenomenal. I think Kira Knight is absolutely perfect for the role of Rachel because she combines what she wanted, which was quite a slightly cool exterior at the beginning of the film because that's her character. And yet, as the film unravels, she becomes tender and empathic and open to what she's placed herself in, which is this alien environment that she has no knowledge of the language, the house, the servants, and the devastating ruins that she sees. Yeah, it's incredibly important that Alexander Skarsgård and Jason Clark had yin and yang, if you like, because they had... Stefan Luber, the German, has to offer her something sufficiently different from her husband to tempt her away. And I think that's what Alexander has, because he's got a kind of gentleness and Jason, who's amazing, has m it's kind of more alpha in a way, and he's more raw as Lewis is. And, and, and I remember, you've got to remember that Lewis, her husband, has gone through the war, five years of conflict. So he would have come out of that conflict with post-traumatic stress disorder, really. Yeah, well, I always start with the human. You know, I think people are going to relate to the human. And then you can weave as much political or symbolic in as you can get away with. I mean, I am quite a political person. But, but th and this story has a political message, you know, at a time of great nationalism, this is a story against nationalism. Whichever side of the divide you're on, whichever side of the divide in America you're on, this story should appeal to anyone who wants a kind of salutary reminder that we need to be responsible for our actions and we need to work towards something that's a damn sight more positive than the direction we seem to be going at the moment. We were, we were lucky enough to shoot half this film in Prague, where all the big ruins were done. Not that not the Prague's full of ruins, but there was a big empty ruined sugar factory nearby. And then, uh, so that gave us the groundwork in order to create these massive ruins. And then on the other side, we have um, Hamburg, which has this beautiful interior, this house that was totally authentic, and we just needed to decorate it.
I'm hoping people will walk out with the power of a love story, but also with the universal message of reconciliation, compassion, and forgiveness. And we all in our lives will have an own personal aftermath of our own, whether it's the loss of our parents or some tragedy. And this is a lesson that actually, give it time, walk towards anybody who's close to you, and you will find the support and succor that you need in order to move on in your life. This story is the most extraordinary moment in history, is that right at the end of the Second World War, a few months after the end of the war, and the British were given the job of running a massive part of Germany, centered on Hamburg, and a British officer invites his wife, Kira Knightley, over to join him. And she's extremely anti-German because they lost their child in the bombing in the Blitz in London. And even worse, her husband allows the German occupants to stay in the house. And it's very interesting how her journey from hatred to affection alters during the course of the film. Well, it was an amazing cast. Obviously, Kira Knightley was the first one to come on board. So, of course, made things a lot easier to have her on board. Um, and then my dream wish was Alexander Skarsgård for Stefan Lubert, the German, because he is different for us, but he's also extremely handsome and somebody that you would perhaps be drawn towards. And then uh, Jason Clarke, who's a really terrific actor to play, to play the husband in the film. Well, I enjoyed two things. Working with three world-class actors was fantastic, um, and, but also creating these worlds, these big, devastated worlds of huge ruins and um, Armageddon, really, on Earth, which is exactly what it looked like. And I think for an audience today to realize that we've really got to work together as individuals and as governments to work towards reconciliation in order to make sure that that never happens again. I think if you're going to tell a story about Armageddon and love in the time of Armageddon, you need a big screen. You need a big screen to see the scale of that destruction and you need a big screen to feel the scale of the emotions that they're going through. And I think that's, that's really why it should feel intimate and epic at the same time. I always think that's an important quality of high quality drama, that you have these very intimate moments it might be just a small kiss or a finger running along the collarbone against these massive, massive landscapes of what looked like Syria, but far, far worse, which is exactly what it looked like. I want the audience to connect with their fellow human beings in the cinema. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those films which centers on empathy and on the fact that we're all the same. There is very little difference between human beings. And actually, if you can just see beyond the photographs, beyond the newsreels, and understand that these people have ambitions, they have love affairs, they have funerals, they have laughs, they have joy and sadness in their lives. I think that's what a film like this can teach. It's like, don't judge people by their cover, spend time with them. I think they're going to expect a real romance of a kind of classical style. They're going to see a story of reconciliation, very, very um, pertinent to our times. Uh, and a story of real redemption, actually. The story of character that Kira Knightley goes on by the end she's a changed woman and it's all done through love and tenderness and compassion.